1490, or as the customer stated, the paperweight. I'm not sure why he had to insult this marvel of engineering with such an ugly word, and I don't care. All I care about is getting it fixed, so let's try to turn this paperweight into a gaming monster GPU. Hello Internet, today we have this 4090 from NVIDIA that came in as paperweight. Given the size and the weight of this brick, few of these could serve as a deadlift. But don't let the size scare you away from getting one of those. Or two. They all look scary on the outside, but once inside, there's nothing to fear. Except that when someone had already worked on this board before. That's the terrifying news. Lots of flux around the core, indicating that some genius attempted to reflow the core in hopes to bring it back to life. But reflowing the GPU soldered from factory will fail about 95% of the time, so it's not even worth trying. This, this, this is not okay. This needs to stop now. This is cancer. In any case, let's do some basic measurements and see if there's any hope for survival. No shorter than 12 and 3.3. 1.8 volt and 1.2 volt are good, 5 volt is good, memory and packs all look good, and these three 12 volt rails also looking good, so we can power this thing on and see what it does. I'll check each face just in case before powering it on by the motherboard. Given the size and the weight of this 4090, the scariest test to perform is to see if the oscillator is generating any signal. If it doesn't, you can kiss this 4090 goodbye almost 43.75% of the time. But in this case, it works. Okay, okay, so let's see if it produces a picture. No picture. Now let's run the memory test and see if it shows anything abnormal. And there is plenty. It says we have errors on three different chips which means that instead of solving one problem, Reflow created more problems, proving my earlier calculation was correct. So please, stop this Reflow nonsense, it doesn't work. What that means is, if your favorite repair guy says, I'll try to Reflow the core, run very far away. Unless, of course, they are Reflowing freshly rebolt core, then it's okay. Rebowl is a very time-consuming process, and if not done right, it can take a day or two to correct it. No shop in the world will be able to afford correcting a failed reflow attempt, as you can already see. Otherwise, why do you think the card is here? In any case, let's reboll this thing and see if that helps.
Okay, reball is done. Resistances have not changed. And all voltages are still present. So let's boot this card and see if we get a picture. No picture. Okay, let's run a memory test and see what's going on. And the memory test shows that we have an error on A1, which happens to be one of the three chips that were reported earlier. It also means that this was the chip that caused all the trouble in the first place. And that instead of addressing the problem with the chip, someone decided to address a non-existent problem with the core by reflowing it and making it even worse as a result. In any case, I'm sure there's nothing wrong with this memory chip at all. And maybe there's a rip trace or something. So let's take it off and see. Just like I said, a rip pad under the memory chip is all it was. And with that fixed, let's see if we get a picture now. No picture. Why? I don't know. I ran the memory test again, and it passed, so I should get a picture. I then wiped the riser with gold pen, because after so many GPUs going in and out, contacts will eventually wear out, causing all sorts of problems. And with that done, we have a picture, and according to Windows, everything should work okay. What's left now is to throw this thing into an ultrasonic, get it clean so it doesn't have any of that flux left over from previous master. Give it a new set of pads, which after trial and error turned out to be exactly one millimeter thick. Then, because card was not packaged properly, a corner of the shell was bent. So I took this copper cylinder and bang it out in place to make it a little bit more round. Which, as you can see, does look reasonably good. With that out of the way, it's time to plug this thing in, power it on, and finally run stress tests. However, the card was banged up so bad that one of the fans got stuck in a certain point preventing it from spinning. So I'll try to bend it back so it can spin like so and try again. Hopefully no more surprises. However, upon running the test, I noticed that the card is running at very low performance. The cause for this was that it was running in X1 mode for whatever reason. Even according to the data line tester, something was clearly wrong. It turned out to be a capacitor knocked off on the back. Not sure who broke it, me or the other guy. And the bottom line is, since all the LEDs are red, we're good. Also, stress test is now showing X16 and the performance is as expected. That will be it for this 4090. Hopefully I earned your subscription with this one. And if you've learned anything from this video, please hit me with a like or a comment below. Goodbye.